What's up guys? A little bit of a different video today. About a week ago, I told you I was going to have a Q&A um, on my Instagram and I was going to move it over to YouTube. I said I was going to do it tomorrow. Um, I did not. But anyway, here I am about a week and a half later. I am going to go through all of the things on my phone and hopefully answer some of the questions. Um, I haven't gone through them like at all. So this is entirely off the cuff. Um, I will like screen grab and then post the actual question like here-ish. Um, <laughs> just so you guys can actually see what the person said. Um, and I'm gonna go through this, you know, very, very off the cuff. Hopefully I give you enough information that it's helpful. Um, but again, this is just a gut reaction to the questions. I feel like if they're rehearsed answers, it doesn't do anybody any good. So, straight off the cuff, let's see what we can find. Okay, so I'm scrolling through these and there's a lot of different things that I could do. Um, I think this one, I'll answer a handful that have only to do with like medical school or maybe there's a couple pre-med questions in here that I can get to. Um, but I'll try to make this kind of the focus of this particular video and maybe in future videos I'll answer some of the other questions, but uh, first things first, medicine stuff. So this person asked, want to know about your study methods? Um, I think that's a great question, but very specific person to person. So when I was in undergrad, I did almost exclusively just like write everything down. Um, in my chemistry and math classes, I got, you know, some practice questions that I did. And I didn't realize until like my second year of medical school that those chemistry and math classes are the ones that I did best in. Um, typically, you know, the hardest classes for most people that were in it. But I did really well because I got a chance to do practice questions. But throughout all of undergrad and the first year of medical school, all I did was write stuff down and write it down and write it down and read it and read it and read it and read it. Read it. It's a lot of work. It's not super efficient. Once I figured out that I learned by flashcards and doing questions, that's all I did. Um, so for me personally, I try to get my hands on as many flashcards and making the flashcards sometimes, but as many flashcards as I can get and then do as many questions as I can get my hands on. Um, that not only allowed me to learn the information, but synthesize and apply the information. And if you can't do anything with the knowledge that you've got, then what's the point of having it? So if you know all of these random facts and then you get presented a, a, a clinical case, the facts, don't do any, the facts don't do you any good unless you can actually put them towards the case. That's all. So for me personally, it's flashcards and questions. Now, these days, you know, almost finished with residency, it's almost exclusively questions because there are just so many great question banks out there. Uh, sometimes I'll do some reading to catch up on some things that maybe I've forgotten or I haven't thought about in a couple of years. Um, I took step three pretty recently and had to reread the pediatrics and uh, OBGYN stuff because I don't really deal with that stuff. So forgot a lot of it. Um, it was like riding a bike. I started to remember some stuff. But that's what I read and did questions afterwards. So I think that's probably the best way for me to go. But you got to do you know what's right for you. You have to try different things. Um, maybe you are a visual learner. You like pictures, or you make these like thought maps. Um, I never got into those. Those looked like too complicated for me. Um, or maybe you just like watching videos or listening to the videos, and you just hear everything and it stays. Um, not my style, but I know people that do that, and that's great. I wish I could do that and listen to everything on like triple speed and everything stays there, but I can't do that. So for me, flashcards and questions for you might be something different, but we'll see. You have to try it for yourself. So next one, uh, this is kind of related, I suppose, uh, how to remember everything that you have studied. Um, <laughs> you don't. Uh, to be completely honest with you, um, you remember things that you use constantly. So like I said, I did not remember most of the pediatric stuff. I did not remember most of the OBGYN stuff. You know, I had to go learn it again. I had to go, you know, read about it again. 
but the things that I do know, you know, off the top of my head, if asked a question, are the things that I use over and over and over and over again, you know, almost every day, and if not every day, at least every week. So the key to knowing stuff is to learn it and keep exposing yourself to it. And, you know, for example, it's going to be a long time before I forget a lot of cardiology stuff because I spent almost three months in a row dealing with only cardiology stuff earlier this year. Um, and if I want to make that my career, you know, I probably never forget it. I'll be, you know, 95 years old with dementia and still, you know, understand a lot about cardiology. Um, I probably won't know my name, but, you know, cable of trick dismiss. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, you just have to keep exposing yourself to it. You have to keep doing it over and over and over again. Um, that's really the only way to get this to stick. You know, you can't read one thing and then just sit there and meditate about it, and then all of a sudden you never forget about it. Maybe some people can. Uh, if you have an eidetic memory, great. I don't. Um, yeah, I wish I did. But, you know, sometimes you just have to grind through it. Um, so do it over and over again. That's the best way to remember everything. All right, let's see. Ooh, this is a good one. Best way to learn anatomy. Um, I don't know what it's like these days with COVID. Um, but what I did when I was a first year med student was I spent as much time as I could in the anatomy lab. You know, uh, if you're not familiar with how anatomy lab works in medical school, um, in my med school, there were four of us assigned to uh, one body and we'd switch days back and forth, back and forth. Um, and, you know, we would just l dissect and then pick out each one of the little structures and be able to identify them on our body. Uh, dissection took a long time. Uh, learning was not so much in the actual scheduled lab time. So what we did was we would go, you know, after hours at random hours during the day. Some people were afraid to go there during the night <laughs> because, you know, cadavers at night, creepy. Um, but I wasn't. Uh, and a couple of us, you know, weren't. One thing I will suggest that you actually do is not just look at your body, your cadaver. A uh, big part of this is... A uh, big part of this is understanding that stuff kind of is a little bit different from, bo from body to body to body to body. You know, um, our insertion points for one particular muscle may not be exactly the same. Um, our nervous system structure may not be exactly the same. You know, things may course in different areas. Um, you know, you should always identify from where something comes and to where something goes. That's, you know, that'll kind of that'll kind of help a lot. Uh, but I think what will help most is seeing the forest with all of the trees. What I mean by that is not only understanding that, you know, one muscle is right here, but also understanding what that muscle does. So if you find... Um, something that you think is one muscle and it's connected in different spots like well this wouldn't actually do what I think this muscle is supposed to be doing then you can catch yourself and understand that huh maybe this is not the right muscle maybe this is something else what does this muscle look like it's going to do and then maybe you can backtrack from there to identify that particular muscle same thing happens with nerves you know where the things go who knows um, you know if they if they find a nerve up here and you think it's the radial nerve but then if you look down it goes through the carpal tunnel Anyway, um, spend as much time as you can in the anatomy lab and don't just look at your cadaver, look at other people's cadavers too and make sure you know kind of the global picture of these things. Make sure you know how the muscles work, where the nerves go, how the vasculature supplies the different areas it's supposed to supply. Spend time, think about everything. It's one body that works entirely together, so separating them into individual pieces and only learning them that way is not going to be super helpful. What's going to be more helpful is learning everything and how it interacts with everything else. So this is kind of like one of the previous ones. This one says, what's your studying methods to retain information? A nursing student here, crying-ish emoji. <laughs> um, it depends where in nursing school you are. If you're in you know, preclinical nursing school, all that stuff that I said before counts. Um, you know, learning, th reading things, applying your knowledge is most important. If you are on the clinical side and there is something you don't understand, you should ask. Ask your preceptor, you know, uh, residents, as long as they're not like 
super, super busy, will be happy to answer your question and explain stuff to you. They should anyway. You know, I love teaching the nursing student stuff. Um, but I think it's, you know, I think it's helpful because they'll learn stuff that I know that maybe they don't know or maybe they didn't get taught in nursing school. I've never been in nursing school. I don't know what they learn. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, you know, we're all on the same team and it's always helpful. So if somebody, you know, gives you a hard time about asking for stuff, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's, that's more on them than it is on you. I mean, unless like I'm actively doing chest compressions or running a code or something, you know, I'm usually happy to answer a question. Um, yeah, so be, be okay with answering the questions. If somebody gives you a hard time, again, not a reflection on you, it's more of a reflection on them. Um, but just always, always have to learn stuff and always know how to apply that stuff. Okay, this one is a pretty specific question. This one is, how did you study for step one? That was a number of years ago, I have to remember. I think what I did was I used um, the first aid for step one book. I did not write in it, I didn't annotate it. Um, you know, that's theoretically all of the highest yield information. There's no point in boiling it down to something that's not so high yield. So once I felt comfortable knowing all the information that was in step one, and again, you're going to have to kind of go back and relearn a lot of stuff because if you take, you know, biochemistry, your first couple of months of medical school, by the time you get halfway through your second year, you're going to forget a lot of it. So you kind of have to go back and relearn a bunch of stuff. Um, I took step one, I think in, I want to say, April of my second year, like late-ish April. Um, I started kind of studying in like October-ish. Once the new year hit, I was studying my medical school stuff and step one kind of 50-50 and going really hard. We got a full month before step one just for de dedicated study time. Um, you know, you're always gonna think it's not nearly enough. Uh, but you know you get through it like everybody else does um, so what I did personally was I read first aid I tried to memorize first aid as best I could and then I did practice questions not only to apply the knowledge that I had but also to practice doing questions and looking for the patterns in those questions and understanding despite all the stuff that they said what are they actually asking me for there's a big difference between next test and best test um, in the question stem, for example. There's usually one little phrase in there that will guide you to the right answer, and you have to figure out which phrase that is. Um, so practicing your question skills, your, st your test-taking skills, is really important in step one studying, because that'll get you a lot of free points that other people would probably miss. So memorize step one when I was awake and you know ready to go. Um, taking a break, I would just watch Pathoma uh, because it was, it just made a lot of sense. Um, I would watch Sketchy, back when I was taking step one, it was only Sketchy Micro. There wasn't Sketchy Medical, you know. Um, so I would watch Sketchy. I don't know anything about the other uh, Sketchy Medicine videos other than the Micro. Um, I still remember the Micro stuff, you know, today. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Um, so when I get tired, it's like watching cartoons, you know, watching these videos, it's, you know, informative, I might pick something up. Um, so d towards the end of the day, I would kind of focus on those sorts of things. But earlier in the day, I would really push the memorization, push the questions, push the flashcards really, really hard. And then as I started to fatigue, I would go more towards the videos because if I go through the questions and go through the memorizations, I'm not going to get so much out of it. I feel like, you know what, pass it off go to the easier stuff. Uh, what's also very important is that you not study too much. Now, I know if you're gonna study 10 or 12 hours a day, you think, well, that's probably too much. But some people would study, you know, from five o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, go to sleep and do the same thing over again. You get burnt out. You gotta separate yourself, like take a half day a week totally off. Um, if you're like me and you're a morning person, I went to the gym at 5.30, I was in the library by 7.30, and I studied until about dinner time, um, about 6 o'clock. So 7.30, 8 o'clock to 6, get me north of 10 hours of studying, and then I'd be done for the day. Just completely done after dinner. Um, I, got a good, I got a good schedule, I got a good routine, I got a good pattern, 
Um, didn't burn out, got tired like everybody else does, but um, was able to uh, to kind of hang on <laughs> just enough. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's how I studied for step one. Everybody's a little bit different. Um, some people like to study from noon until midnight. Fine. Wasn't my thing. I like to go to bed early. <sighs> Sometimes I like going to bed when it's still light out in the middle of the summer. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I did for step one. Um, you know, work really, really hard in the, you know, in the morning when I'm fresh and then towards the end of the day, kind of cut back the aggression towards the, the, the material, do a little bit more passive stuff, watch the videos, listen to lectures if you have to, um, and hopefully some more stuff sticks. But most of my, um, my information came from during the day, uh, the earlier part of the day anyway. All right, let's see if there's anything else that I haven't touched on yet. All right, so this one's actually a good one. Um, it's not directly like learning medicine related, um, but it's, I think it's close enough and it's important enough. Um, this person asks, at what age did you take admission in medical college? I wanted to know when it's too late. <sighs> well, I was 26 when I started medical school. I was among the older crew, um, but there were plenty who were older than I and much older than I. Um, I started residency when I was 30. I will uh, finish training if all goes according to plan when I'm 37. Um, I had plenty of medical school classmates who were in their 40s. You know, they had lives beforehand, uh, like I did, but it was a you know shorter time period. Um, when I was in medical school, one of the EM residents, uh, who is now an attending. Um, was a psychiatry attending for a number of years before he went back to residency in the emergency room. Um, you know, at our hospital, we have a fellow who's in his late 60s because he wanted to go back and learn something different. Um, at the end of the day, there's no such thing as too late. You know, if you want to do it, go do it. You know, you're going to age anyway. If it's something that you want to go do, you might as well get older doing the stuff that you want to do as opposed to just getting older and wondering what if and thinking, you know, oh, maybe I'm too old. Oh, woe is me. You know, bummer. You know, if you're going to, if you want to do it, just go do it. At the end of the day, it doesn't make much of a difference. Um, you know, if you're a cardiologist, you're a cardiologist no matter how old you are. If you are a surgeon, you are a surgeon no matter how old you are. If you're a neurologist, you're a neurologist no matter how old you are. At the end of the day, nobody's going to care how old you are or how old you were when you finished or how old you were when you started. Um, and frankly, there's a benefit to being older in medical school because you have a degree of maturity going into medical school when you are, you know, 26, 30, 40, 50 compared to those 22 year olds who went high school, college, med school and haven't really lived outside of education. Um, so that's a big benefit in my opinion. Uh, I get asked all the time if I would take all those years off again if I had to do it over, and I would say absolutely. Um, you know, being a 20-year-old college freshman and a, you know, a 26-year-old, uh, I forgot how old I was, a 26-year-old, um, you know, first-year medical student, yeah, it's a little bit older than the norm, but it helped me a lot. I got a chance to grow between just doing, you know, um, you know, graduating high school or graduating college and moving on to the next phase of my life. Um, and that's super important and you really can't put a value on that until you actually do it and compare what other people have done. Um, so it's not too late, it's never too late. That's a song, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so it's not too late. Um, you know, I have, I have pre-med friends in their 30s. Um, and I tell them the same thing. If it's what you want to do, go do it. All right, I think that's going to be it for the medicine version of this Q&A. Hopefully next week or maybe even later this week, I'll be able to record again and get some more information out to you guys. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and um, hopefully I'll see you next time.